So look, um, really for us, uh, I did have some insight into the game being at the Youth Olympic Games in 2010, and that's where I met uh, the Australian coach and, and watched the Australian women. Um, silver, I believe was, was the result. It really, uh, for, for my group, it was about um, getting us there early. We were there 48 hours beforehand. Uh, again, we played Team USA, and I can have a joke with Steve. Mel Young was the referee for the second game, coming out of retirement after 25 years and, and so forth. And it was a turning point for us because a couple of my younger players in the team actually said, well, coach, what you're saying is right. And I'm looking at this and going, yeah, well, you know, that's, that's what we do. But it was a momentum changing thing for us because we went from being a group of players with two experienced players. One of our players, Isaac Foto, who had just come back from our tall black team, which I think had won the Stankovic Cup in China from memory. And um, little key things like that, particularly with teenage athletes, it just hit a little. What happened there? Hit a little trigger point with the athletes, and, and it really started from there. Uh, just to digress, I'll go through this with you. Um, and we're going to do some transition work with the athletes and then I can open the floor up to any questions. Um, again, the player selection, I touched upon it. Um, I had to choose, you're only taking four players away. Okay, so you've got to have four players that you can look in the eye and you know that off the court, they're there for the right reasons. Uh, I've got a little term there, I don't coach politicians. I didn't need... Um, players that if they weren't playing well we're going to drag other people down with them. We had to be a tight unit and we were and it's something I think you have to be aware of particularly in this form of the sport because if you do go away to one of these events you are the coach, you are the manager, you are the physio, you are the laundry person, you're everything and um, you know you've got to doing those duties you, you digress away from your core responsibilities so you know you've got to have Good kids, okay? Yes, you want the super athletes, but they've also got to be good good people. Because if they're not, you, you know, you're going to have those trouble, troublesome little things that happen. Um, preparing for Romini, uh, I took, and I guess it was most probably a key decision for us, I said to the players, when the game starts, you're not going to hear me because in Singapore they had a lovely DJ system and I was sitting there on the sideline and I thought, well, I might as well not be here. My players can't hear me. So my sort of belief heading into Romini was the players had to take ownership of the team. Okay, every stoppage, get them together, get them organised. Instead of having one coach, we had five because that's what we had to be. Now, the technical meeting the night before the World Champs, the coaches were informed, you're not allowed on the court. And for a lot of the European nations, it was a little bit of a shock because they had been coached by their coaches standing here. What to do, and suddenly you're out, you know, you can lean on the fence by the side of the court, but you can't coach your players. Um, we were prepared for that. Um, and you'll see it in the footage and the DVDs you get that we had the ability to change our offences from our players doing it, which is a pleasing. And I think that's an outcome for coaching when your players themselves are recognising things that aren't working well, um, they're recognising mismatches, and they are evolving and doing it themselves. And that, that's, that's a sign, I believe, of, of good coaching. Players themselves are doing that. Um, and I sat my group down. I have my own vision of how the game should be played and we'd been through our offences and I said to my players, you know, do you like our low post set, do you like our high post, do you like our dribble handoffs, do you like our on balls, etc, etc. Going through the process because I didn't want to have a scenario where my players weren't happy with what we were doing and going and doing their own thing. So there has to be buy-in. Yes, we're working with teenagers and they're a dangerous generation to empower a lot of times, but you know, um, they have to be involved in your process. And that's what we had. Uh, challenges for your coaches, muscle memory. These are five on five athletes, okay? They're used to 24 seconds, full court game, go and take a couple of possessions off and hide. You can't hide here. And that was a big challenge I had. Lateral speed, lateral fitness, uh, muscle memory, 
bad uh, boxing out techniques. They do the five on five technique where they're spinning on the box and their player goes around them and he's this high or, or she's this high and gets a rebound and lays it up. And as a coach, you're exploding on the sideline because they're doing their old five on five box out. Okay, I try to teach the face guard box out on the weak side, go and find your man. Okay, because there's nothing worse than having a, a 6'10 player that spins and boxes out and a little 5'8 guard goes right around him, lays the ball up. And that, that is a key component of this game. That's something you've got to see during the tournament. Um, a lot of offensive rebounds. And the game is about offensive rebounding, make no mistake about it. If you're a good offensive rebounding team, you're going to be in games. If you're a good free throw shooting team, you're going to be in games. And those were two areas that I did focus a lot on. Um, again, I had to, like uh, Christy, I had a short period. I had about five weeks, and I had one week where I didn't have my players uh, because of the New Zealand High School Championships. And I had to juggle all their commitments, and we had weekend camps, about three or four of them, I think, in, in total. Uh, our power forward came in the last weekend before we went. I managed to um, film some trainings, get that off to them in Europe and let them see what we were running. Okay, that was my style. Again, with a lot of you, um, bear in mind that you have to take into account athlete workload, what they're doing and when you get them and what you're trying to do with them. Okay. Um, my guys, I got them at a time where they were peaking for a high school championship, but I, it's a different game. Um, three on three is fitness. You might be five on five fit, but you're not three on three fit. A 12 second shot clock, two five minute halves, or 14 seconds as it is, um, you know, you crash very quickly. Okay, and the first thing that goes is your outside shot. So I had to juggle how much conditioning work I did with my athletes, and to be fair, I had to do a lot. Um, and we were most probably the fittest team at that tournament. Well, three of our four players were anyway, the other one wasn't. But fitness, we had to play 12 games in three days, and that's a lot of basketball. Particularly uh, at that level where you're playing against the Serbias, um, Italy, Bulgaria, uh, Germany, so forth, you know, they, they're conditioned, they're ready, they want you. So, you know, we, we were prepared. Um, we're going to go through a lot of our, um, similar to what Coach did in the first session, I'm a huge believer on breaking down my offences option by option, even though it's a 12, 14 second shot clock, it's still a lot of time. And when your athletes get very good at the game, they can rest on offense, um, and we had to break it down, and that's what we did. I would set the shot clock, uh, game clock for two minutes, and we'd do one drill for two minutes, three on, three off, going, 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 then we go and shoot a free throw each, then we stretch, we've got a minute recovery, then we go into the next option, read and react principles, but that's the way we had to, it's a crash term, that's the way we rolled, that's the way we prepared, and it was conditioning work, it was getting into the, um, Athletes DNA, what our offences were, read and react principles, whether it be a low post, a high post or whatever, just so that they understood what we were doing. Because these athletes, they crash quick, they panic, first reaction, take the shot, take the shot, take the shot. So they have to be able to adjust and handle that. Okay, um, again, Three on three, you have your great street ballers, your social athletes, and you have your high performance athletes. And really, for the high performance athlete, it was making them understand that structure will beat street ball. Um, and you, you'll see that when you receive the DVD of, from there, all the teams, as touched on earlier, they all ran on balls. Um, they all ran low post, high post stuff. There wasn't a lot of just get it out and hoop it up stuff. So it is a good, also a good teaching tool. Um, for your clubs, for your national programs, um, teaching on ball principles and very good shooting drills as well. Okay, so that's really a lot of that. I'll get the athletes up if you want to start to warm up because we've got to take you through um, some made miss basket principles. I'll give you two minutes to warm up if you like because we're going to get after you a little. Okay, all right. Uh, you will receive the breakdown. These are just breakdown sequence drills. Um, 
I like the pass. I don't have a problem with passing on a, on a missed basket. Again, it's an individual coach's prerogative, but my principle was get the ball out here as quick as possible, okay? I play three receiver spots, as does coach with a very good Australian team she had. Split line 245s, use the width of the court, okay? Don't clutter it, play out of it. Um, don't be scared to pull your team out deeper on the court, okay? Um, change it up, use the width, you know, pick your moments for your on balls and so forth, okay? So while they're warming up, what we're going to do is it'll be three on, three off, athletes coming through the no charge zone. We're going to go through um, some sequences of stuff we do. Okay, now for coaches, for you, what it's really saying is you've got to have your transition offense. Okay, when you get a defensive rebound, you're in transition mode. So you want to look at whatever offenses you're running and break it down option by option. Get the ball out to your spots, even read and react principles, and get them moving. Okay. We ready there, team? Very good, very good. Okay, so we'll break into um, our two color groups, red in. Red can come in first, okay. Um, Tanya will have a laugh, this is about the eighth time in four days you've seen this, okay. Um, I believe, my personal opinion, these drills gave us the edge purely because they were conditioning drills, okay, and I've got a microphone on and I won't be barking like I usually do, but we lift the intensity, okay. Great athletes here, I came into the training, I was very impressed with a lot of your work this morning, okay, but we're five on five fit, this game's different, okay, and, and this is where you put the kilometres into the body, okay, these drills. You don't need to do a lot, what I'd like you to do is we've got to get, rip the ball out of the net, I want two of you out into receiver spots, say 45 and a, and a split line, and we've got to go a post hit, okay, on the catch, pitch it out, so any time on your defensive rebound you get it, you're looking, you pitch out, and we're sealing. Okay? Two scenarios for me personally. Um, the FIBA rules last year stated four team fouls, you're on the line. We had a concrete mixer, about a 6'5, six, 6'6 six, six boy, and no one could move him, and he can bang. So we got teams, whenever he got a defensive rebound on a pitch out, would come back into him and he'd either finish or draw a foul. Okay? And we got teams in, in the red very early on in games. And then we, we could go to our on balls, dribble handoffs, and we could get to the hole and on fouling situations we go to the line. Okay, that, that was my way of attacking it because we were an undersized team, so we had to attack the transition component of the game. For this group here, so what I want you to do, whoever gets it off there, um, you're posting up, okay? Hit a wing. Pass straight back in, made, go through the no charge, circle out, next group in. Okay, have we got it? Visual learners like me? Yeah. Very good, so very good. Just it on, the rebound. Whoever gets it, you just pitch, seal, other two out. Let's do it quick. I don't want to see the ball touch the floor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Let's go, thank you. Hit it, good. Yep, next group in. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Rip it out, rip it out, rip it out. Okay, hold up, that's fine. Yep, next group, let's go, 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 go. Just leave the ball, girl. Leave the... Yep, don't stand there, just get it out, get it out. Let's go, good, good, next group, next group. Pick it up, pick it up, rip it out, rip it out. Okay, we'll hold it up, that's good. Very good. We'll critique things a little bit. Remember, you get the rebound, okay? See the, see the floor, rules of the tournament, no point throwing the ball to a player on the run out. Okay, because it's not live to she's to here. Primarily, we want to hit the player on the catch here, so you got your shot or you got your dump. Okay, we'll do that two more times, one trip each. Let's go. Let's go. Good, good, excellent. Watch your passing. Nice job, nice job. Good, good. Watch the travel. All right, good. Okay, let's go uh, up fake steps through on the post catch. Thank you. Let's go. Good, good. Nice. Finish. Good. Good. Let's go. Let's go, girls. On the seal. 
Nice job. Just give up a basket. Come on. Follow through and finish. Good. Nice job. Pick it up. Pick our speed up. Two more trips each, please. Two more trips each. Both teams. Two each. Yep. Two each. That's all right. Let's go. Let's go. Don't telegraph the wheel. You're making the pass. Come on. Good, good. Finish. Finish. Don't be shy. Don't worry about it. Let's go. Good. Good. Excellent. If you're counting, I'm New Zealand, I can't count. Let's go. Good. Good. Good, good. Last sprint. Come on, come on. Okay, that's it. Nice job. Finish, please. Good. Come on, come on. You're on camera. Okay. Okay. Uh, remember, as soon as you pick the ball up, or as soon as you get the rebound, the clock's bang on 14 seconds. So my principle was get it out quick. If you're being pressured, yep, you dribble out, okay? Now, this time on that post catch, I want that weak side guard diving. So you're catching it, backdoor cut, layup. I don't want to see the ball touch the floor. Does that make sense? Real quick pass and drill, okay? Transition, two passes, one, two, three, okay? Let's go. Good, yep, nice job, good, good. Let's go, let's go, nice, yep. Come on, back, okay, you want to take a jumper? All right, let's go. Yep, good, nice cut, let's go. Yep, good. <clears throat> yep, very good. One more trip each, oh, I like that shot, huh? I like to shoot, that's good, good. Let's finish girls, let's finish. Come on. All right, that's good, okay. I stole a lot of that sequencing off um, the Israel coach at the World Under 17 Champs we play. There was an exhibition tournament in Hamburg during the Under 17 World Champs and uh, Israel won the tournament, we finished third and they had a, a team of, I was probably shooting guards, small forwards and the, their ball movement was amazing. On transition, it was just, honestly, it was like table tennis, the way the ball was moving. Okay, so we just, I took some of those principles. What we've got to do now, uh, post entry, uh, guard on the wing pass, your man's doubling down on the post, you can just slide in and kick back for a jumper, right? Just yeah, just round in. You have to get used to my accent. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Good. Yep. Good. Nice job. Yep, try not to go through the middle, good. Okay, so while they're doing this, I think this is very similar to what you saw in the, in the last offensive breakdowns, good. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's good. Finish it, last group. Okay. All right, so with, with my team or my group, um, I'd set that for two minutes and we go and we work hard and for yourselves whatever offences you run you break it down option by option okay so it's getting in the DNA what they're doing and at the end of the two minutes they're on the free throw line because you know when you go to these tournaments um, the kids are going to crash quickly so they've got to experience the shooting mechanics on that free throw line when they're getting maxed out because um, that's where we won our title on the free throw line. We shot very well, just from doing a lot of that. Um, what we've got to do now, just we'll go through again, uh, except this time, from the top, uh, let's just dribble out and go post entry, okay? We've done pass out, now we've got to dribble out. Make sense, dribble out, post entry, okay? Speed, let's go, let's go, get it done. Yep. Good. Next group. Let's go. Yep. Push around. She can dive. Good. Go to receiver spot. Nice job. Good, good. Let's go. Try not to go through the middle, please. Come on. It's all right. Good. Next group. Both feet outside the line. And dive. Good. Yep, and we'll just hold it up there. 
The reason why I'm doing this is um, a lot of kids instinctively, athletes will, oh, I can make fun of some of our own players, our New Zealand style of doing this, and get the ball and dribble out and take our time and order our coffee and turn around. And we've got about five or six seconds to go on the clock, okay? So we, we get after them, you know, you've got to get that ball out quick. Um, instinctively, we like to take our time because we're thinking further down there, okay? So we do a lot of this, and, and it's really important. You may not agree with me, you're entirely over, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion, but this made us fit, strong, um, fairly sound decision makers. And I'll say all that, and when you get the DVD and you'll see the final, it was the 12th game we'd had in three days. We most probably defensively had our most horrible game because it was two teams that were about ready to fall over. But, um, you know, we just hung in there. But this stuff here prepared us. When you go to these tournaments, um, it's a lot of basketball. Believe me, look at your teams tomorrow. They're going to be a little sore, okay, because this is all different for everyone. So the management off the court, uh, the little rollers, you know, break, good stretching, um, hydration, nutrition, okay, all very important. This time we've got to pitch out, dribble out, and I want the big come setting the on ball, and we'll just pull it and play out of it, any option. Dribble out, call it, fist it, pick and roll, weak side shooter, okay, let's go. Pick it up, good. Yeah, try and flip that. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. I'm not saying anything. Balance the floor. Finish it. It's good. Okay, that's great. This time I want to want you to dribble out. Go to your three receiver spots. Okay. Um, and we want to see the split line on ball. Okay. So you can dribble out. If, if, you've, if the bigs fill this spot, you just have to wheel and you've got to come set an on ball, okay? Shoot it to corner. This, was, this is the toughest one to defend. I mean, um, you would have the emotional roller coaster ride on the sideline during games and teams go to split line on ball. It's just like, oh, here we go. Because um, the European teams are so good at executing this. They really are, so it was um, something that when teams went to it, if you went under, popped it. If you hedge, come off it, boom. So that they were fully armed with what to do. Um, we had our own style of dealing with it, where we would squeeze and get them out of there. Okay? You girls ready? You think so? <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's go. Good. Cool. Yep. Nice job. Go either side, that's fine. Yeah. Just a shoulder on that screen, huh? Good, finish. Come on, girls, you're standing around. Loose ball, let's finish it, huh? Yep. Okay. Okay. Last trip. that. Nice job. Finish it. And let's go some free throws on. Two each. Two each. So that was just a, a brief skim through. Again, I just make the point to you, whatever offences you run, as opposed to going three on O, just going through it, break it down. Um, you know, these athletes have crashed. They've had a busy morning, but you get after them. You have a punishment for bad passes, you know. Um, 17 slides, whatever you want to do, but you make them focus, okay? Because um, if I have a fault as a coach, I really focus more on the offensive set as opposed to critiquing players on correct passes and, and so forth. But this is a very good way of covering everything conditioning, shooting, spreading the floor, okay? 
go and find whatever offences you like. There isn't a coaching manual, okay? It's very creative what you want to do on three on three and what you believe um, best suits your group. Um, so you've got to find offences that not only suit your team but teach them to play the game. Um, I've really gone through it very quickly. That was what I was going to cover today. Uh, I was just going to open the floor up. While I've got the athletes here, was there anything you wanted me to cover for you with them before I let them go to their charming families? Anything you wanted in particular to be covered? Or? Okay. I think we had a late night last night. Everyone's a little bit tired. So thank you all for today. It's been a pleasure. Would you like to warm down? I'll take your basketball with me. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. So. Is there any questions regarding Italy, my minimal experience with three on three? Yes. Did you have any teams um, trying to defend the outlet, like to, to, yep. to score okay. the sure. dribble out or the pass? I've just got to repeat the question to our man up top. So yep. The question being, did we have teams pressing the ball on a made or a miss? Yep. Yeah, we did, um, which made it interesting because uh, a lot of teams actually backed off it or they scouted you and they knew who the player was to mug on, the, um, on that scenario. Uh, but generally the rules being if I had to touch upon things on a made basket, I would be telling your athletes, this tournament you've got the safety of the no charge zone, but last year we didn't. So I was, and I didn't cover it unfortunately, I always told my players turn on the inside foot on the made basket and see what you're playing before you pick the ball up. Okay, because instinctively you'll have athletes come in, come pick the ball up like this and the strip's on. Okay, uh, open it up, yeah, and if they want to press, well your two teammates have got to get to receiver spots and if they're in a denial, you're just going to have to bring the ball out. Don't go to the corner. Okay, don't, because um, with the physicality in the tournament, you can end up over the sideline and can be the other team's ball. Does that cover what you were? Uh, teams do it. Were they very effective? They, day, day one, they came out full of fire, but the unfit teams, day two, were more in a passive passive containment role, I think would be the term we'd use. You pick your moments and I think it's something, um, as a coach, you might have a, a, uh, a code, a name for it, where you want to press up, where you want to um, stop the game without unsportsmanlike fouls, where you, you want to press it up and double team and, and, and get them a penalty. Is there any other questions on, on this today?